Hey everybody, it's the Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. So this video is going to be something that is actually not covered by Micritic in the MTCNA, which is the entry level certification for Micritic. But me, I feel this is vital to understand, especially in the beginning of your networking career. And that is VLANs. If you don't understand how VLANs work, if you don't um, understand how to set them up, you are going to have a difficult experience when you are trying to administer a network that is running networks because most networks these days will use VLANs. It's, it's a given. If you are working in a, in a WISP, like a wireless ISP, you're going to be dealing with so many VLANs. So it's good for you to get the principle of VLANs in the beginning instead of later on, like in the MTCRE, where I'll also be giving you some more advanced things regarding VLANs when we get to that point. But you need to understand how VLANs work and how to configure them. And that's what this video is for. So like I said, if you look at the outline on Micritik's um, site for the MTCNA, VLANs aren't covered at all. And I'll be trying to give you a base explanation on how to set them up on the device. And I'm also going to put a link in this video that you can follow that gives you an explanation on how VLANs work. So I hope you have fun with this. I do hope you learn a bit about VLANs because I know that when I started in networking, VLANs and subnetting, those were things that seemed so above me. And it took me a while to get it. But once I got it, super easy. But you need to start somewhere and you need to work on it. So I'm going to get into the video now. Hope you enjoy. All right, so this is the like eighth time I'm making the video because every time something happens, which is unfortunate. So <laughs> let's try this again. Welcome to setting up a VLAN on Micritic. So I've set up a very basic lab here, which I think a lot of people can relate to. And that is maybe spanning VLANs for small office networks, or it could be a, a, a big company, but they just don't really work much with VLANs. And on the topology, we've just added a switch and then probably like a user, like a computer and a phone. So that, that's something you'll typically see is a business will have a requirement to have a phone and LAN network on different VLANs. And you always want to make sure your VLANs are separated because you don't want one big flat network because it can cause a lot of uh, broadcast overhead. And it's also very easy then to cause... Um, malicious intent on that network if, if everything's just running on the same range. So we want to secure our network and we want to use VLANs. So let's set up a VLAN on the Micritic. I've already done the configuration on the switch. I'll run through the configuration on the switch. It's a Cisco switch, even though I, I probably shouldn't be talking about Cisco when I'm showcasing um, Micritic stuff. It's, it's still something that you need to see and understand. So let's just jump onto our Micritic router. And I can see I've got Ethernet 2, which is going to be running to our switch. Now, let's be on the Micritic. Let's navigate to our interfaces. And from the interfaces, there's two places you can add VLANs. You can either go to the VLAN tab, or you can click on the plus symbol, and then click on VLAN. I typically just go to the VLAN tab because it will give you additional information on what's happening with the VLANs. And then from here, we can just click on the plus. Brings up a new box. Now we can give our VLAN a name. So I'm just going to call this LAN. Then we've got MTU. I'll go more into MTU in a later video when we start doing stuff for like MTCRE. But MTU by default will be 1500. That is pretty much industry standard. But there are uses in dropping it or making it bigger. But we're not going to do that here. We're going to leave everything default. Now the big important part, your VLAN ID. This is very important. You need to make sure your VLAN ID corresponds with whatever is running through the whole network, through your switches up to the end point, which would be the computer or the phone or the CCTV camera, etc. So this VLAN ID, I'm going to make VLAN 10 because that's what I've assigned to our data network already. Next important bit, which interface are you tagging this on? So in our example, it's on Ether2. So I'm going to leave it on Ether2 because that's the cable that's running to the switch. If we look there again, Ether2 goes to our switch. Now I'm going to apply this 
and we will see here is our VLAN, it's being created. And then it gives us all this handy information, like there's the VLAN ID, here's the interface. If we click on it, we can see the status, when the link came up, how much traffic is passing through it, even though it isn't passing anything right now because we haven't really connected anything yet. And then there's all these other cool things we can do like torch the interface, but we won't jump into that. I've got a separate video about torch anyways. So we've created a VLAN for the LAN now. So let's also just create a VLAN for the voice, for the phones. So I might call this voice. I'll leave the MTU again. And the VLAN ID that I've assigned is 20. And I'm gonna use Ether2 again, because it's on the same uplink cable. So that's also the nice thing about VLANs. You can use the same interface to span many different VLANs, many different networks. So you don't need a bunch of different ports to um, span the networks across. So I'm going to apply this. Now I've got a voice and a LAN. If I go back to my interfaces, you'll see that the LAN and voice is now under the Ethernet 2 interface. And if I jump onto our topology, the VPC3, which is the PC, which is the data network, I've already spanned this across in order to get onto that VLAN. So it's part of that network. So I'm just going to jump onto this PC give it an IP address. Let's just make sure what that IP is because I'm not sure I've actually assigned the range yet. So let's go into our IP addresses. All right, I haven't assigned an IP address range yet. So let's add one. Let's make it like 192.168.0.1 slash 24 on LAN. Now let's get back onto that virtual PC and the IP I'm gonna give this is 192.168. 0 0.50 slash 24 and 192.168.0.1 will be the gateway. So that is the Mikrotik router. Now let's quickly see, do we have comms? Can I ping 192.168.0.1? Yes, I can. So I'm actually now getting to this VLAN interface across the LAN network. So I'm not going to Ethernet 2 directly. I'm actually accessing a VLAN now. Let's do the same for the phones. So on the phone network, I'm just going to add another address. Let's make me make it like 172.20 um, dot dot slash 28. And I'm going to assign that onto the voice VLAN. Now let's jump back onto our topology on Eve. And for this computer, I'm going to give it the IP address 172.20.20.5 slash 28. And then 172.20.20.1 is the gateway. So I'm quickly going to see, can I ping 172.20.21? And I can. So now I can get to my voice network, which is brilliant. So I've actually spanned a VLAN. The VLANs are on Ethernet 2 and it's going to our switch and then from the switch it's segregating or separating the networks. I'm going to get into the Cisco switch. Not that um, I'm trying to force Cisco on you, but Mikrotik only gives us the cloud hosted routers as a virtual option. So it's not like I could show you what this looks like on their switches, even though it's very similar to working on the on the ROS on, on that GUI. Um, but on a switch perspective, I'm just going to show you the VLANs. So I have VLAN 10 that I created on the switch. I have VLAN 20 that I've created on the switch as well. So on a switch perspective, VLAN 10, I have untagged on GI0 slash one. VLAN 20, which is the voice, I have untagged on GI0 slash two. And then we have a trunk interface, which basically spans all the VLANs to the Mikrotik. So think of VLANs almost as, it is, it's, it's not a sub interface because you get things called sub interfaces, but think of it kind of as a sub interface. It's something that you put inside your interface with that dot one Q tag, 802.1Q, in order to tag the packet with a VLAN so that it knows which part of the network it is. Reason this is useful is whenever broadcast traffic or any type of traffic goes out, 
let's say this computer sends out an ARP message, it's doing a lookup, the phone network will never receive that ARP message. It will stay inside its own VLAN, which is way more secure and it's going to be something that you need to do. So that covers how to set up VLAN on a LAN level. And there's so many different ways that we, we can get into this. Um, I mean, I'd actually like to show you how to just do this quickly between two Mikrotik routers as well. So I'm, I'm gonna add a, another Mikrotik router. Let's just give this a nice little icon. And there we go. So that's now another Mikrotik router. I'm going to connect this maybe onto um, Ether 4 for both devices, just because. So you could almost think of this if you were like a WISP maybe, and this is your CPE at the client side, and this is actually like your high site or your connecting site where your other router is. It, it doesn't need to be that type of situation. It, it could really be anything, but this is now just going to be straight between two Mikrotik routers. So I'm just gonna start up this new Mikrotik router. And a lot of the actual VLANs on this new router, I'm gonna do through the command line. Hang on, I need to just kill that quickly. Sorry, because this is a version seven uh, Mikrotik that I just brought up, which is not going to run very nice because it, it's, it's still in beta. Version seven isn't out yet. Hopefully it's out soon but we'll play around with what we currently have, version six. All right, so adding another router, starting it up. And it's, it's actually going to be quite similar to what you saw now when we spanned VLANs across the LAN, right? And <laughs> But now you could almost say that you're going to do this on a link basis. So each customer would probably have their own VLAN for each link so that they could use the same physical wire or radio frequency, but they'd be on different VLANs. So I'm going to jump into this Mikrotik. Admin blank, no. And it looks like goobly garb, but just because I logged in, I might have to restart that Mikrotik. Yes, I do which is unfortunate. Okay, Mikrotik, you should be behaving now. Admin blank. Okay, so we don't have any IPs, we don't have any VLANs, all that stuff. So what we're going to do is we know on Ether 4, we've patched that cable. I think it, it could even be a, a WLAN, okay? So we'll be just adding a VLAN and let's just call this customer one link. And I might make the VLAN like 1189 or something. And I'm going to put that on Ether 4. So that's on Ether 4 now. I'm going to do the same from the CLI for this new Mikrotik. So interface, add, interface VLAN add, the VLAN ID, which I already forgot. So let's just quickly get it. 1189, 1189, interface was ether4. And the name, customer1 link. All right, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to add an IP address quickly. So IP address add 10, 10 .10 slash 30. And we'll put this on the customer one link VLAN. Now let's just do the same on our main router. And I'm going to add 10, 10, I'm gonna make it 10, 10, 44, dot one slash 30. And let's put that on customer one link. So if I go into my IP neighbors, there's all kinds of neighbors that I'm picking up. 
but the one I'm interested in is this customer one link. It's got the IP address now, it's got the MAC address I'm learning, so I can see it over this new VLAN that we created. If I also go into a terminal maybe, I could also ping this 10.10.44.2 address, and that's over the VLAN. So there's so much more we can do with VLANs, but this is just a base understanding on how to set up a VLAN on Mikrotik and how to span it between two different devices, just so that you can set up that IP communication on VLANs. So I hope the video has helped you. Maybe you've learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, like it, share it. I do appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.